The first question is, I am an arthritis patient. I find it very difficult to kneel down during proclamation. Is it okay if I sit or stand at this time? It's understood. An arthritis patient cannot bend his or her knees, cannot kneel down. And our rituals are not these mechanical rituals that we have to do it in this way, we have to do it in that way. What is important is the disposition of our heart. And therefore, an arthritis patient is nowhere bound to kneel down. Perhaps if he can't also to stand, he can sit and participate in the Eucharist beautifully and very satisfactorily. The second question is, after the priest wishes, after the priest washes his hands, he says, Pray, brethren, that this sacrifice may be acceptable to God our Father. You remember that prayer, that address of the priest. And the question is, does the congregation continue to sit or should they arise? At the online masses, people in various parts of the world stand up. So please clarify. You know, this part of the mass where the priest is inviting the people, pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and my sacrifice, we say that it is preferable that the people also stand up. They stand up and join the prayer of the priest and that is why the standing up posture at this time is more appropriate. The third question is, why is there, why is there a different creed sometimes used at Mass now? This is a very intelligent question because those who have heard the creed in the Mass, there are two types of creeds. One is called the Apostles' Creed and the other one is called the Nicene-Constantinople Creed. These are big words. The Apostles' Creed is that creed which in tradition in the Apostles, it seems when they met together after the resurrection of Jesus and they were going from place to place, the parts far away, never to meet again, never to come back again. And so that they said, what shall we take to the people? What, what is the message or rather what is the truths of the, our religion that we take to them and they synthesize them into 12 articles of faith. And therefore, since the, its origin is from the Apostles by tradition, we believe and we call it the Apostles' Creed. And the second is called the Nicene Creed. And uh, the Nicene Creed was very specially sort of discussed as there were a lot of controversies between the people as this should be said, that should not be repeated. There are some perhaps who said that Mary is not important. There are some who said the church is not important. And therefore the Nicene Creed in the year 325 took up this issue and synthesized all the 12 articles, the same 12 articles of the apostles, but with a little more explanations. And then this was confirmed in the Const uh, Council of Constantinople in the year 381. So these are the two creeds that we have. And so when do we say them? First of all, the Nicene Creed is said almost the whole year, throughout the year, except in the season of Advent and Lent. The season of Advent and Lent from olden times is a time when the new converts the, what we call the catechumens were prepared for baptism. In ancient church, this 40 days was a special time for them to for everyday study, everyday perhaps prayers, scrutinies, fasting. And with all this, they were prepared for baptism. And one of the important parts of that, of that rite was for them to know the truths of our religion, the 12 truths. Do you believe in God? In the beginning, it was in a question-answer form. And they were asked and they had to reply with concrete examples from their life. That was the way that they had to respond. But later on, this became a, a prayer type or declaratory type of the creed. And therefore, in the season of Advent and the season of Lent, the church recommends that the creed of the apostles be recited at other times, the Nicene Creed can be done. The question is asked, which creed should the children learn? My answer is both. My answer is both. 
The shorter version, of course, we know and our children have known it well, but it's better also the, the other version of the creed is also taught to them so that they become rich in theology, rich in our belief of God and also the practice of our faith. I wish you a very happy Sunday. I wish you a very happy Easter season because this is a season of joy, season of hope, season of love and season that we proclaim to the others that Christ is risen.